to Joe Biden today. Uh, there is polling by the Associated Press that shows that almost 70 percent of Americans, including 40 percent of Democrats, believe that you acted either illegally or unethically in regards to your family's business interests. Can you explain to the Americans, uh, to Americans admit this impeachment inquiry, why you interacted with so many of your son and brother's foreign business associates? I'm not going to comment that I did not, and it was just a bunch of lies. You didn't interact with many of their lies. business associates? I did not. There's what? lies. What's the Chaos in there. No, no meaningful follow-ups on that subject. Of course, it deserves a ton of follow-ups. So we'll follow up right here. James Lynch joins us now. He's an investigative reporter for the Daily Caller, and he joins us on the phone. Hello, James. Hey, Ben. Thanks for having me. Let's address what the president said today. The president said that it is a lie that he interacted with his family's business associates. What's the truth? Yeah. So the truth is that Joe Biden has interacted with uh, Hunter and James Biden. A former business associates. We know this from testimony delivered by Devin Archer, and we know this from uh, White House visitor logs from the Obama administration when Joe Biden was vice president. And we know this from new documents released by the House Ways and Means Committee yesterday, provided by uh, the IRS whistleblowers. And the documents show that uh, Joe Biden was emailing Hunter Biden's former business associate and accountant, Eric Schwerin, and that the pair exchanged 54 emails one-on-one -on -one that Joe Biden sent through his pseudonym, Robin Ware. So we have plenty of evidence that Joe Biden spoke with his son, business associates on multiple occasions. Uh, not just the not just the uh, the friends of Hunter Biden, but also the foreign business associates. We know that Joe Biden attended a dinner featuring Burisma executive Vadim Posharsky. We also know that Joe Biden attended a meeting after his vice presidency with business associates from Chinese energy firm CEFC. And this is according to Rob Walker, who is another Biden business associate. We also know spoke with Joe Biden and played golf with Joe Biden on multiple occasions. So that's that's the truth about Joe Biden's interactions with his son's business associates that he didn't. OK, he did not do that. OK, James Lynch. But other than that, what evidence do you have? Yeah. So besides the testimony, besides the <laughs> I'm just not just messing with. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a huge that's a huge piece of evidence. Another name I didn't hear you mention though is Tony Bobolinsky. Uh, Bobolinsky has uh, laid all of this out. They, yeah. Obviously, he met with Joe. They they had dinner together. Joe vetted Bobolinsky to establish that hey, he'd be a good business partner for the family. Yeah. So Bobolinsky told the FBI that he met with Joe Biden at a hotel in California in 2017 after Joe Biden had left. Uh, the vice presidency. And Bob Alinsky told the FBI that he talked business with Joe Biden because of the potential uh, joint venture called Sinohawk, which is where the infamous 10% uh, for the big guy comes from. And we know this, we only know this officially because the FBI FD302 interview summary was released by the Ways and Means Committee in September, yeah. thanks to the IRS whistleblowers. Also, uh, you mentioned Devin Archer. Devin Archer has produced a handwritten note from Joe Biden while he was vice president of the United States uh, apologizing to Devin for not getting a chance to talk to him at a luncheon that was being hosted for the Chinese president, who at the time. Yeah. Uh, and so like the idea like, oh, I've never even met these guys. is It's absurd in every possible way you can measure it. Yeah, precisely. And. Uh, Devin Archer, the letter that Joe Biden wrote to Devin Archer was first shared by uh, Tucker Carlson when Archer interviewed Tucker Carlson. And Archer even mentioned that Joe Biden met with one of Hunter Biden's Chinese business associates named Jonathan Lee in Beijing for coffee. So that's that's just Joe Biden wasn't <laughs> speaking with them on the phone or meeting with them in America. He was also meeting with them in foreign countries, according to Devin Archer. It's amazing. All right. So so yesterday you, you noted earlier that the IRS whistleblowers Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler met yet again with the House Ways and Means Committee. And the reason this is so important, that this particular uh, construction, James Lynch, is because because they are active IRS employees, they're not allowed by law to just share you know what's going on with somebody's tax filings typically. But the one way they can do it is by communicating directly with the House Ways and Means Committee, which is allowed to take this kind of testimony on this on this intimate tax data. And uh, when they they revealed some stuff yesterday to include what you mentioned just a moment ago, which is that 
Joe Biden seemed to be in constant contact with these Biden family uh, par- business partners, and they, he was using his pseudonyms. These are these are email addresses that he had that were not Joseph Biden. They were just all these different names. Yeah, so we know that Joe Biden was using one of his pseudonyms called Robin Ware to communicate with Eric Schwerin, who is formerly a close friend and business associate of Hunter Biden's. And we specifically know that the communications happened in spring of 2014, around the time Joe Biden went to Ukraine in June of 2014, which took place only a couple months after Hunter Biden was appointed to a Burisma's board. A Burisma paid Hunter Biden more than $80,000 per month as a board member, even though he didn't have any experience in Ukraine. But at the time, his father was leading the Obama administration's Ukraine policy. And apparently, uh, Joe Biden was also communicating with Hunter Biden's business associate, Eric Schwerin, by using an unsecured uh, alias. And in this case, it was Robin Ware. Huh. And and you you say that most of the communications that were released yesterday, or, or at least the what we know about the communications, most of that occurred around the Ukraine deal, like around the firing of Viktor Shokin? Yeah, we don't know specifically what the communications say. We just have a document from the IRS whistleblowers that has email metadata showing Joe Biden communicated with Eric Schwerin on specific dates. But we do know that uh, Shokin was eventually fired, and Joe Biden has said publicly that he pressured Ukraine into getting Shokin fired. And uh, Shokin appeared to be investigating uh, Burisma at the time for alleged corruption. But I, we cannot confirm or deny whether Shokin was the subject of any of the emails of Schwerin. Right. We don't we haven't seen the contents of the email. We just know there's a lot of activity, uh, a lot of emails being sent around the time of Shokin's firing. Uh, This was before Shokin's firing, Mm -hmm. but. But perhaps they might have talked about it. It's hard to say, especially because there was a prosecutor who was in there before Shokin took over the job. Okay. Uh, Got it. But according, according to Fox News, the whistleblowers would have needed. A search warrant to to obtain the contents of the emails themselves. And we know from the whistleblower testimony that certain efforts to get search warrants related to the Hunter Biden investigation were stonewalled by uh, Department of Justice officials, specifically U.S. Attorney or Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf from the District of Delaware. So it's hard yes. to say that if they pursue the so search warrant, they will be able to get it. On, on that front, Leslie Wolf, what can you tell us, James, about the likeliness that she's going to testify at any point in the near term? Yeah, so uh, Jim Jordan subpoenaed Leslie Wolf to testify later this month. Uh, the subpoena happened in late November, and we'll see if Wolf is able to testify. David Weiss, the special counsel in the Hunter Biden case, and a bunch of other Department of Justice officials have testified before the House Judiciary Committee and discussed their alleged conduct in the Hunter Biden investigation. The testimonies have confirmed some of the key allegations brought forward by the whistleblowers, but Weiss and Attorney General Garland both did not really discuss any of the specific allegations against Wolf. No, when they testified. no. In fact, if I recall correctly, I think Merrick Garland was suggesting that even invoking her name was bringing threats upon her; that it was dangerous to mention this this poor assistant U.S. attorney. Yeah, Garland, when he testified in September, claimed that there were threats being made against Leslie Wolf. I don't really know much about that, but uh, Wolf is obviously. A, a, a central figure to the Hunter Biden investigation. The whistleblowers have testified that Wolf presented uh, Wolf prevented a search warrant from including Joe Biden, who she referred to as political figure one. And this was backed up by a document that, that they released in September. We also know that Wolf appeared to stonewall an effort to search Hunter Biden's storage locker in Virginia, which investigators believe contained evidence relevant to the Hunter Biden case. So Wolf will definitely have a lot to answer for when she testifies. Yes, and didn't she also author the plea deal that was used, uh, that that was attempted uh, to to get Hunter Biden off scot free from any meaningful charges? Yes. So um, media outlets have reported that Wolf played a central role in the plea deal that would have given Hunter Biden prosecutorial immunity related to his conduct with Burisma and with China. And we also know that Wolf's name has not appeared on any of the court documents related to the Hunter Biden case, even though she appeared to be working on the case only weeks before the initial charges were brought against Hunter Biden. But 
we don't know the reasoning for that. We don't know what's going on internally. That's so, so, DOJ. so isn't this bizarre? I mean, for any number of reasons, but one is like, if you're a, like a, a U.S. attorney or an assistant U.S. attorney, wouldn't you want your name on the documents showing, this is a pretty high profile thing. You're going after the the son of a major political figure. You're demonstrating no man is above the law. You're doing this prosecution. Uh, her her fingerprints are not on on any of this. Her name's not on it, and yet she's the guiding force behind so much of the effort to how they handle Hunter Biden, apparently. Yeah, and we know that Wolf conducted a lot of work on the case over the period of years when uh, the Delaware office really took control of the investigation. So it is pretty strange why her name is not on any of the court documents. So we, again, we don't really know the answer to that question yet. Got it. And, uh, David Weiss didn't really talk specifically about Wolf, aside from defending her integrity. There, there was some drama today as it relates to Hunter Biden's potential testimony before the United States Congress. Most Americans, if they received a subpoena to appear before Congress, is not really an optional thing. Uh, but Hunter Biden's attorneys seem to think it's entirely optional. What's happening right now, James? Yes. Yeah, so Hunter Biden's attorney, Abby Lowell, he wrote a letter recently proposing that Hunter Biden skip a closed door deposition that the oversight committee uh, subpoenaed him to appear for. Instead, Lowell suggested that Hunter Biden should simply testify publicly. And James Comer and then Jim Jordan and Jason Smith who were leading the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. They rejected Hunter Biden's request and they told him to come for the deposition to testify. And today, Comer and Jordan both threatened to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress if he defies the subpoena and refuses to appear for the closed door session. And that would be on the 13th. That's what they've scheduled it for. Yes, they've scheduled it for December 13th. It's we'll see what Hunter Biden's attorney says in response to the threat to hold him in contempt. We know that Comer also threatened to hold FBI Director Ray in contempt when the FBI was reluctant to show lawmakers the FD-1023 form containing the Biden bribery allegations. Uh, the, the lawmakers eventually were able to view that form. So Comer has threatened, subpoena, threatened yes. to hold somebody in contempt before, and now he's doing it again with Hunter Biden. Okay. Uh, lastly, if I could, I, I request a, a news story from you. Uh, this is unusual, but I wanted to do this. Would you ask the Department of Justice whether they would prosecute a contempt of Congress charge against Hunter Biden should they receive one? Yeah, I think it's hard to say whether what the DOJ will do, but we we do know that uh, Biden appointed U.S. attorney for uh, Washington, D.C., Matthew Graves. He would probably be the one to handle that case. Yeah. And Graves previously refused to partner with Weiss on the Hunter Biden investigation, something that the IRS whistleblowers first brought to light yeah. and that Graves and both confirmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're going to obviously not comment to you, but. It's a good story anyway. They refused to say whether or not they would actually prosecute uh, Hunter. Yeah. And, and Vince, let me note that Joe Biden previously said that uh, people who defy subpoenas should be prosecuted, and this was related to the uh, January 6th committee. He did say that. Uh, actually, here is, let me see if I have it here. Actually, this is the audio of Joe Biden saying that very thing. He asked the president tonight, what is his response to this? What does he think of people who are defying these subpoenas? And should the Justice Department prosecute them? And this is what he told us. I hope that the committee goes after them and uh, holds them accountable. Should they similar. be prosecuted by the I, Justice I do, Department? yes. Yes, says the president. He said he's, he says the Justice Department should prosecute his political opponents in that clip uh, for uh, failing to respond to congressional subpoenas. It's, it's amazing. It's a good reminder. Thank you very much for that. James Lynch over at The Daily Caller. Good to talk to you today, sir.